Hello and welcome back to my series on building a garden room in my garden. In part one we looked at how I went about building the concrete base and the little brick wall. In this part two I'm going to be looking at the timber work, building the stud frames for the walls and also the timber roof. There's quite a lot of information on the internet about making stud walls, um, framing walls for sheds and so on. And here I'm cutting the timbers to length and putting them in position ready to do, in this case, the back wall. I thought I would start with the back wall as it didn't have any openings in it, in it whatsoever. So it was a bit of an easier one to begin with. So once I've got all the timbers cut, I'm fixing here the, um, the wall plate, the top plate, um, as it were, to the studs. And I'm using a combination of nails, five inch nails, but also above the nails there you can see I've also used some screws. And I think they were 100 millimeter screws. So I just had a screw and a nail in each location. The nails look like they're going in very easily and that's because I pre-drilled the holes except for the last couple of inches or so. So having got this frame finished, what I'm doing here is checking the diagonals to try and get the, um, uh, the framework as square as possible. Right, so this is what I've been doing. I've managed to get the uh, the frame up behind me and it's all nice and square. I've put that uh, bit of OSB board on there and that makes it square in each of the corners. So uh, that's up and it's secure. What I'm doing now is I'm working on the, um, the front um, stud work. So I've just uh, got the boards here and I'll show you what I've been, what I've been up to. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've marked off the um, the position of the f the 400 centres. These are the black lines all the way along, and then I've marked off where the door is going to go. So if the door is here, right the way across to here, and then according to the drawings. Check that you can see this. Yeah, you've got to have uh, what they call a jack stud there, and then a king stud that goes up right to the from the base to the top. So I've marked off where my king studs and my I've called them cripples actually. Don't know whether that's right, but um, that's the jack stud. So I've just marked that for the side of the door and also for where the two windows are going to go. The windows are going to be in this space here. So I've counted the number of king studs, they go top to bottom and I've also got the um, end ones to do. So I'm going to start cutting them now um, and then the shorter ones I'll do I'll do later when I get it all laid out on the floor. So I hope that's okay. Let's give it a go. When I was cutting these timbers, I tended to use the circular saw um, in association with a roofing square or a set square of some sort, just to make sure that everything was cut nice and perpendicular uh, and true. It does help really. And we've got all the studs cut and then looking along each of the studs here to see which way the uh, timber is bending really. And in my case I put them crown uppermost so the bend is uh, facing upwards. And that way we keep the, the wall as straight as possible when it's all assembled together. So I'm just making the lintel for the door. What I've done is I've measured the uh, space between the king studs 
I measured the space between the king studs and cut these uh, four by two to size and then they're going to go in like that but in order to uh, make up the gap I've put a little bit of five millimetre plywood inside there so what I'll do is I'll screw that up and then place that at the top of the door it'd be like the lintel okay so that's the next job now in making this 4x2 lintel um, it hadn't really occurred to me at the time that maybe it wasn't going to be strong enough 4x2 timber was uh, readily available to me at the time in the garden there I had lots of uh, spare timber knocking about 4x2 dimension so that's what I reached for but then subsequently I found out that maybe 6x2 would have been a stronger choice um, I did keep the 4x2 in the end but you'll see later on how I attempted to beef up the lintel area of the door opening. Well, I eventually got that frame squared up. You can see here the doorway and the two windows and the braces providing support for the whole of the, um, the wall frame there. So, having got that bit done, it was a case then of getting on with the two side walls. It was a relief to get all these um, cuts done. There's quite a lot involved in making the openings for the windows and the doors, as you can see. Having got the front and rear walls done, I then went on to make the side walls using the space between the front and rear frames. Here you can see I'm just uh, finishing off by knocking in the nails, the five inch nails and the screws. So that completes the framing. Uh, I've done the three walls uh, over the weekend and then today I've just finished this one. And I'm just in the process now of bolting it into place with some uh, coach screws. So um, it's gone pretty well. Uh, mostly it's accurate. Uh, everything's plumb. Um, I've got the header in the window correct on this one. Uh, there's one or two other areas where I've made some little mistakes, so I'm going to be honest and show you where the mistakes are. So these are the good bits. I'm, uh, I'm beginning to screw in these coach screws and connect this frame to this frame. And I've got about five or six of them all uh, distributed up and down the, uh, the 4B2 CLS treated timber work there. Um, same over here. So hopefully uh, that will that will keep the keep the structure together. Um, where did I go wrong? Well if you look um, if you look at the the building everything sort of uh, looks pretty good. Um, but what I did um, I built, I built that end frame to, to, to work in with the two sides. I got the two sides up first and then I built the end frame on the floor lying this way. Okay, so that one, that frame went up pretty well and I secured it into the sides and then what I went and did, probably foolishly, I uh, secured the base plate all the way along on here onto the brickwork below and the same over here all secured with these um, I think they're called lightning bolts uh, and that's worked out pretty well but what's happened is the building tapers only by a matter of millimeters down to this end so when I came to build this frame um, I couldn't actually build it on the floor slab in the direction that it should have gone up so I had to do it sideways on because it was slightly bigger so in other words my timbers when I laid them out across here were too tight on this last panel so I had to do it sideways on which meant uh, it's not a big deal but I had to manhandle the thing upright and then slide it across into place and I did this 
on my own. I mean, it's only a small panel. It's only three meters wide, but it's quite heavy going. But I managed to do it anyway in the end. So this end here is literally by a couple of millimeters too too wide, and I think I should have been more. It would have been more sensible to have got all four sides up and then bolted the thing down. So that was the first little error, nothing major. The other one, you'll notice I've got a 1500 wide doorway here. I kind of thought about it, I've got loads and loads of 4x2 timber, CLS treated timber. I think it's uh, you know very uh, good quality stuff. Is it 100 by 50 something like that? Um, and it recommends using four by uh, two by six timbers for the headers of the doors, the openings. But I've just used the four by two, so I hope it's going to be strong enough. I've um, spliced in some five millimeter plywood there, just to bring the bring the timber out to the right alignment with the rest of the stud work. So that's gone on all right. I hope that's going to be strong enough for the uh, 1500 wide door. Also, a little bit of an error here, in, in my kind of race to get completed, I've put this header in wrong way around. It should be turned through 90 degrees, so I'm just hoping that that's going to be okay. I literally put everything together, there's loads of 5 inch nails and screws in all of this lot. I don't particularly fancy taking it all to pieces just to turn that bit around. So I'm going to leave it. Uh, and hope for the best. I think the, the roof structure is pretty lightweight anyway. Um, so next job is to get the thing bolted down and then get the sheathing on, the um, OSB sheathing 11mm board and that will um, give the structure a bit more rigidity and then it will be onto the roof. So I've made some progress uh, since my last uh, post. What I've done recently is I've put the 11mm um, OSB sheathing on the outside of the stud wall and I'm just beginning to start putting these 6x2 um, timbers on the roof. It's a bit of a slow job because what I'm doing is I'm putting the timbers on and fitting little um, noggins in between as I go. <coughs> what I've done is I've spaced the timbers out on these centres so they're evenly spaced all the way along the wall and uh, used these joist hangers upside down to secure them as well as a big screw that goes right up through this wall beam, wall plate, up into the rafter there, into the base the joist uh, and then also skew nailed from the top down so not only is there a joist hanger upside down but there's a couple of screws 100 millimeter screws and a couple of uh, I think 80 or 90 millimeter galvanized nails one in each side uh, to make sure that these timbers don't move get a lot of wind uh, up here it's quite windy today so what I don't want particularly in this corner here which faces west and that corner over there I don't want the uh, the wind to get under it so I'll show you what uh, what I've been up to one of the little areas that I was a bit concerned about was the um, the strength of that uh, beam over the door as I said earlier on I, I should have really used six by two timber some of that stuff up there but as I was using the 4x2, that's what I used. So what I've done is I've filled the gaps, the spaces between the noggins with some uh, pieces of hardwood and they've been glued in. It's like, um, I think they were table legs so you can get an idea of the uh, size of the, the timber that I used. So that's all glued in there and I think that's given it a bit more structural support. Um, also down this door here, uh, next to the door and the window. The frame's quite small really so what I've done is I've also glued in some uh, some some timber, some reasonably good strong timber. Likewise over here. 
just in an attempt to kind of give the thing a bit more rigidity. So what I'm doing here is I'm just fitting these 4x2 noggins as I go along. So I've just uh, secured this uh, joist here and I'm fitting the noggin, noggin in place. What I've done is I worked out exactly the space between each one and then cut these equally and then the beams basically fit to, to the noggins. You'll notice that the noggins are a bit short. This is, um, this is four by two and that's six by two. So when, when I fit this, there'll be a void above to allow airflow. This is a cold roof. So there'll be um, insulation up to this level, a moisture barrier, then the plasterboard. But beyond that, up to the deck of the roof, there'll be a space so there'll be a soffit at the front and a soffit at the back and there'll be airflow along the, the length of the, um, the timber work here. Oh. <laughs> oh. My arm is tired now. What a battle. Thing. Right, so what I'm doing here, I've got the timbers now on the roof and what I want to do is just cut off the excess there. So this is the back of the shed and you can see I've put a, a line there, that's the line that I want to cut the uh, joist off. So I've got myself a, a chalk line and I've transferred that measurement, that same measurement, all the way down to the far end. And what I'll do is I'll just twang that chalk line and that'll give me a nice straight edge to cut to. And then use my saw to cut off the excess timber. What I've done is I've taken into account the... Um, just get this focused up. I've taken into account the the depth of cladding and the uh, battening that's going to go on here. So the batten timber is about 25 and then the cladding is another I think 19 millimeters so you've got 45 millimeters out and then on the end of here I'm going to have another board obviously that's going to be my um, sort of like a barge board that's where I'll attach the uh, the guttering and so on. So effectively that's going to be the edge of my roof and I've left myself a little bit of a span here um, overhang to put some um, <coughs> soffit vents in. So the soffit vents will be in here and they'll mean that the, the roof will be ventilated along the length of the, um, along the length of the roof. So each of these cells will be ventilated with soffits at each end. So what I'm doing here is I'm using these um, 100 millimeter, um, what are they called? Advanced timber fixing screws. They're designed for outdoor use, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, and basically they, um, they've got like a kind of um, hex flange head, I think they call it. So they're the ones that I'm using to fix these noggins at 400 centres. They go out over the side of the, of the roof there, give me the overhang on the side. So I'll just go up and um, have a go at doing that. So I've pre-drilled the holes. Gotcha. So as, I, as, as you can see now, I'll just show how I've done this. I've used little bits of offcuts of timber just to fill in the gap. 
and get that one out. So my my stud wall is level, but the roof is angled, so there's a gap here, and on the inside that would create difficulties for um, for the plasterboard because you'd have the plasterboard coming up here and nowhere for it to uh, be nailed to. So by putting this timber in here, just little bits of offcuts, making use of scrap timber really, I've filled in this little space all the way along. As you can see, I'll show you inside. So on the inside, you can see the timber now comes it covers that gap all the way through. I just need to screw it in place and then as you can see all the way I've got somewhere for the plasterboard to be attached to. So when I got the final joist screwed in place I then went about fitting a timber fascia board. This is a bit of rough sawn timber because eventually I'll be putting a UPVC um, capping fascia board on. But here I'm attaching the timber work just to finish the roof stru structure off. So this is the roof completed now, um, or at least before I put the decking on it. I've put um, a bit of a fascia board on uh, on the perimeter but obviously I've got to put plastic oh well in, in my case I'm going to put plastic UPVC um, fascia boards and soffits on so um, you can see the, the timber work there um, some noggins in between and this is the the joist that overhangs the uh, the building and noggins here I've used coach bolts two coach bolts there 100 millimeter long and the same here one coach bolt that's recessed so that it doesn't interfere with the fascia covering when I get that and a 100 millimeter screw. I've supported these noggins because they're clear of the wall plate here so I've just put some blocks underneath them. So the next step now is to get the roof finally um, covered over and when I get a break in the weather and I can put the um, sterling board decking on top I'll be fitting the EPDM rubber roofing membrane so that's for the next episode, so please look out for part three in the building of my garden room. Thanks for watching, um, if you'd like to su subscribe please do so, otherwise um, if it's been of any value to you please give it a thumbs up, it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks again, bye for now.